November. And Senator, this is going to shock you, Senator Arlen Specter is changing parties. I'm so shocked. I, I thought he was a Democrat. <laughs> Who knew he was a Republican? I didn't really, wouldn't have guessed that from his votes. Anyway, in an effort to boost his chances of winning re-election next year. So I just want to make sure I understand this. He's selling out because he's too big to fail. The move pushes Democrats now closer to a 60-vote filibuster-proof majority. Oh, goody. But here's the one thing that I think everybody is missing, or at least a lot of the people in the media are missing. And maybe it's me. I mean, I hear from Stephen Colbert. I am nuts. So maybe, maybe I am. But America, I'm going to be real straight with you. Something just does not feel right in my gut. There, there are too many things here that just don't make sense. Yesterday, I told you all about the swine flu, which has killed more than 150 people, sickened thousands more in Mexico. The U.S., New Zealand, Spain, France, Israel, the Middle East, all over the world, they are preparing. It is scary. I get it. We do need to prepare for a possible global pandemic, which experts agree is coming, just maybe not this one. Two experts today on my radio program said this is the real deal. But if that's the case, then why is the media talking about Arlen Specter? It's just about politics. Something's not right. And maybe, maybe it's just me. This is happening at a time where there are, uh, I don't know, there are a lot of odd things that just don't, I'm a consistency freak. I like things to be consistent. And sometimes I just can't fit them. And I look at the pieces and I'm like, it doesn't fit. And it takes a while to figure out. But here are some of the odd things that nobody seems to be wrapping their arms around, and I can't figure out why. As of today, we own half of General Motors. Banks effectively have been nationalized, and that is only going to get worse, and it's weird because they did this big stress test to figure it all out. And then the government said, ooh, looks like they're not going to pass, so they're going to have to raise more money, which they won't be able to do. So they'll have to go to the government for more money, which will mean the government will own more of their stock. Hmm, isn't that convenient? They're also about to set up universal health care at a time when the swine flu is just kind of kicking in. By the way, this is, the, this is how Obama talked about the swine food flu yesterday. See if this bothers anybody else but me. This is obviously a cause for concern and requires a heightened state of alert. But it's not a cause for alarm. Can, can, uh, may I just, and again, uh, uh, nothing against President Obama, everybody has to use a teleprompter. Can the man not just look me in the eye and say, hey, you're concerned about the bird flu or the uh, swine flu, and I understand it is a cause for concern, but you don't need to be panicked. Why must everything be on a teleprompter all the time? And the same exact speech, this also happened to nurture and sustain a culture of scientific innovation. In addition to John, sorry, the, the, uh, I just noticed that uh, I, I jumped the gun here. Go ahead and move it up. <laughs> I'd, already had, I'd already introduced all you guys. I mean, this is broadcast news, man. This is broadcast news. He's a talking head. Again, I understand he's busy, he can't memorize all of the speeches, but does it bother anyone else that historians say now that he has used the prompter way more than any other president ever has? Does it bother anyone that he wasn't even able to start speaking until the script was in the exact right place? Do you remember Sarah Palin's prompter acted up during the RNC uh, speech? She, this is the first time she was on a national stage. Her butterfly, and remember, she's the dummy that doesn't even know Russia is a country. She gave the whole speech without it. We all watched in amazement on the few places that actually reported it. Then yesterday we had the secret photo op of Air Force One flying over Manhattan, which gave a lot of people flashbacks to 9-11. See all those people on the street? They were evacuating buildings. These people are running in fear because the president flew his plane over for a photo shoot. He's yelling at General Motors. And, and now the, he's yelling at uh, Chrysler, which the union owns and we own General Motors. Now. 
He talks and yells at them about coming to meet Congress on their private planes, but he's taking Air Force One, a jumbo 747 out from Virginia to fly it up to New York for a photo op. Obama is looking to cut spending line by line, and yet somehow or another, they just missed a really expensive buzz past ground zero. By the way, we did a rough estimate. With the info that Air Force One costs $67,000 an hour, plus you've got to have at least two fighter jets. We saw one in the sky, but I don't think they fly alone. So you got at least a couple of fighter jets running at about $7,500 an hour. You figure on the low end that it was three hours to Andrew Air Force Base, up to New York, and then back. That adds up to $247,000. Times are tough. So I'm going to give this to the president, you know, as a free gift to you, the American taxpayer. We used Photoshop, $800. A couple of hours to work it out with, you know, a good artist. Take a look what we've just done. Whoa, there you go. Air Force One and the Statue of Liberty. Okay, you can take it down. What about the 100-day love fest between the president and the press that we're now in? The, the nonpartisan Center for Media and Public Affairs found that during his first 50 days in office, the nightly newscast covered Obama more than Bush and Clinton combined. It was also much more favorable coverage. Who would have seen that coming? The group found that the ABC, CBS, and NBC newscast, 58% of the coverage was positive, compared to 44% of positive under Bill Clinton, 33% for George Bush during the same time period. And it's, it's not just the press that is fawning over Obama. Try this new picture. The president wearing a crown of thorns in messianic imagery. The artist was going to unveil this tomorrow in New York's uh, Union Square, but it's been canceled, quote, during the, due to overwhelming public outrage. I don't buy that. I'm sorry. That's NYU. Oh, like the students at NYU are like, I don't know. That does kind of mock the Christ. Meanwhile, a new CBS poll came out. Today, a poll came out. Couldn't find CBS, couldn't find a single African American who disapproved of what Obama is doing in office. Not one. Zero. That's really odd, isn't it? Considering I had several of those non existent people call the radio program earlier this morning. As I've told you before, I believe Barack Obama is like David Copperfield. We are all watching what the right hand wants us to watch. The swine flu response, the teleprompter, the flyover. What is the left hand doing? What are they doing?